Welcome back to another edition of Flight Tying for Beginners with Jim Mishura. Today I'm going to tie a bead butt black nose dace. This is this uh, fly I actually learned from a saltwater fly tire that made bead butt bait fish. And the reason for the bead butt, it it doesn't the fly isn't going to nose dive so much. It's going to kind of just go down nice and, and evenly with the weight or the bead being in the back of the fly. So the hook that, I, that I'm going to use is an octopus hook and this is a number six octopus. And you can get these hooks from uh, your local bait and tackle store. I pick up mine pretty cheap from uh, Walmart. Uh, Eagle Claw is a good is a good hook to buy when you're when you're buying them from uh, the tackle shops. They're good. They're cheap too, but they're very good. Now I have a three and a half millimeter silver bead on there. Our our other materials are going to be. We're going to need a little bit of red, whether it be a hackle. This is red, but here's a pink hackle. And basically, I'm gonna I'm taking the uh, the fluff that we would normally throw away. I'm taking that off there, and there's an af actually an aftershaft feather right there. But uh, that's here and there. But we're gonna use this marabou type stuff, and I'm gonna use it from the red. And that's going to be our tag on the end. And then for our body, on the long shank uh, black nose dace, it has a tinsel body. So what we're going to st stimulate, simulate that with is crystal flash. We're going to use some silver crystal flash. And that will be like the body of the black nose dace. And then from there, we're going to use some white bucktail. This is a really beautiful one. All of these, uh, all the hairs are nice, long and stiff uh, hairs. Uh, very few that are curved. The ones way down the bottom here, you can see this curve. But we'll be using the tips. And then we're going to use some black bucktail, and that will be the stripe in the center or that big thick lateral line that the black nosed dace has. And then we'll be using the natural brown on top. And uh, of course, a black nose dace needs a black nose, so we'll be using black thread. Now we're going to start by starting our thread behind the bead, and we're going to bring that back. And we're going to bring that back to the end of the flat. See, it's a little bit frayed there. I'm gonna have to add a little bit because that fray means that I, I have a chance of breaking. But as you're going, you want to keep uh, testing the bead. The back side is countersunk, so that's big hole. You want to test that bead and make sure that you're gonna be able to slide that bead down into position, which is gonna be about right there. So we're gonna put our little bit of a tail on there or our tag on there. I'm going to take our the fluff from the bottom of our red hackle feather. I'm taking about a half of an inch off the feather and we're just going to use the tips obviously but we want that I like that butt to be about the length of the flat from the front of the eye to the end of the flat. This actually could could serve as a couple different things. This could be I'm just going to kind of give it a couple of loose turns there and then secure it. Now you don't want to put a whole lot of turns on this because we have to remember the hole in the bead. I'm going to go ahead and trim that down, leave a little bit of a tag. But I was saying this actually could serve as a couple different things that I'm thinking of now 
is it could be a gill the the flare the flare gills and it also could be there there's actually a black nosed dace that's a red belly black nosed dace so that could actually represent the red belly of the black nosed dace that is a different species now we're gonna take this and like I said you gotta make sure that you're gonna be able to push that which I think I'm gonna push that it's it's pretty close that I have a little bit too much uh, thread on there so let's go I'm gonna take a little bit off that front there and even if a little of that tag is still exposed not a big deal I'm gonna go ahead and tie that off here's a good time to show you the whip finish once again take your whip finish put it over the thread the, the hook go around the camel hump bring it all the way back flip it up and now we hit there's our X we bring that X down to the thread or the shank and just turn it maybe about three times for this take it off the camel hump pull the hook to the shank and then we can trim off that thread now I'm gonna let me test that there a little bit yeah if I when I push it it's gonna get there into position it's still a little bit tough right there but I'm going to give it a good push to get that in there in there into position. I'm going to take the I use this Loctite super glue and it's a gel and it, it it's really nice cuz it comes out just as much as you want. It doesn't clog up the the hole in the tube. I'm going to just squeeze out just a bit. And also the gel is also Gives you a little bit more working time. Put a little bit of a bead on the bottom there. And like I said, it gives you more of working time. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to push that. And I'm going to get that right in there. And you can see that gel. There's still a good amount of gel sticking out there. And yeah, just kind of push that in there. And I'm not going to get that all the way in there, but there's plenty of super glue in there. So we're just going to leave that to cure. Now I'm going to try to be careful that I don't move it, but we're going to reattach our thread at the front. And we'll bring that thread back to the bead. And then something that you could do is you could go ahead and build up your thread right there and that will hold that bead into position hold that bead and keep it from sliding forward on you but once you get the rest of the materials on there there we got a nice little bubble there tighten that up there a little bit so you can see it now with the crystal flash I'm sure many of you have experienced this. You take this crystal flash in and out of this package all the time and you want to keep it in the package and store it in the package because take it in and out of the package it's going to become a big knotted mess. So what I, what I do is you cut a little hole in the bottom and then I take my whip finish, that little hook there or some, something with a hook on it and you can just pluck out a few of the you can just take out a few of the strands that you intend to use. Oop, there's some more coming out. Just hold on to them. Okay, you can see how what, what's happening there. I'm going to go ahead and tap them back down into the package. Now I have, I don't know, seven or eight of them there. So I'm going to cut them off close to the end of the package there. So they could go back into the package and you don't have a big mess. We're going to take this. I can see I have one short one, two short ones. And the crystal flash doesn't have to be even. You know, you could actually even just kind of take them and make them different lengths. But we're going to hold that on there and we want this to be maybe 
twice the length of the hook. We're just going to hold that there into position. Hopefully I don't get gel on my fingers, and I did a little bit, but it's curing. So I have about eight strands there. I know if you want it a little thicker, you could go ahead and fold that over and uh, add that to it. Don't worry about that sticking up at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and trim that off. Put the remainder on the side for the next one. And clean that up just a bit. You could even go ahead and hold that down there a little bit. And that, that, that glue will probably actually catch it. Whoop, sticking to my finger again. Anyway, folding it, folding it like that is going to help lay it flat. Now we're going to take our white bucktail first. We're going to take our white bucktail, and we don't want a lot of them because we're going to put three different colors on there. So I have, I don't know, maybe 20 or 25 hairs there. And when I cut them off the the bucktail or the tail skin, cut them really close to the you can see here, you cut them really close to the hide there. Now I cut them off and pull any short ones out and any fuzz that's in there. I'm going to put these into my large hair stacker. And the other day I was looking through the Facebook there and I saw a question about the the tire, the person that made the comment said when he uses his hair stacker, the his wife and children always think somebody's knocking at the door. And to prevent that, just go ahead and tap that on your knuckles. They're not going to hear that. And it's still going to get the same job done. I lift the hair stacker up some. This one I could lift a lot because it's so large. And then tap it. And now you take it out in the same direction you're going to put it onto the hook. And you can see you have a plenty to grip the uh, to grip to take it out. We're going to take this and we're going to measure that. We want that about the length of the tail or the length of the crystal flash. Maybe even a little longer. But I'm going to trim this before I put it on. And that's about it. I'm going to take this and I'm going to trim that down. And now when I go to, to tie it on, this may also work with squirrel tail, which is really slippery. I'm going to hold that a bit at a 45 degree angle and then tie it in. Get it from the front and you can see it's going down nicely. Now that's going to stick up. And actually that's, that's really not bad sticking up your hook if my hand was the hook you know if it when you pull with this turned up eye you know it, it might it'll be riding more like this which would put the feather straight or the wing straighter now we're going to take some black bucktail let me get that a little bit more onto the top there there we go now we're going to take some black bucktail and i think i'm going to take a little bit more than i did for the white section I might take remember always you're going to be using the tip so the thickness of it at the bottom isn't going to be what the thickness at the what you're going to use is and again I'm going to trim it off nice and close to the hide pull any short ones or fuzz out of there and I'm going to put these in the hair stacker again when you're using bucktail and you try, want to get them in the hair stacker if you have them like this and try to get them in look at how wide this is basically just inch your way down the hair until you get it pretty tight I actually even use my other fingers to try to get them 
tighter yet. We'll get them in there and we'll put them in and just push them in. And you can see how messy this is. That's because there's shorter ones in there and they're getting popped up. We're going to go ahead and tap this. And because these are so long, I'm going to lift that up pretty high. You can probably barely hear it hitting my knuckles. And then take it out in that fashion again. And I'm going to size that up to the previous. Okay. And trim that down. And again, hold that more at, at 45. Get that closer to the front first and then work my way back up it. And I'm getting that thread right to that bead. You want to pull on it, but just be careful. Don't pull too hard and break it. And now our final color is going to be the brown. And this one, you can see there's fuzz in there. I'm going to take that and hold that. And you can see all that came out right there. Put that in the trash. And if it's really fuzzy, you could go ahead and take your comb. Oh, there we go. And you can see a bunch of it came out there. And once again, we're going to put that in our hair stacker. that in there and taking the fuzz out especially is important because if that fuzz is in there it's going to hold them together and they're not going to stack properly or stack well get them to vibrate down I'm going to lift my tube there and there we have a nice aligned hair That black was a little longer. I'm going to try to size them up almost to the black size. Let me widen that out a little bit for you. So we're going to wide, we're going to measure that out to almost to the black size. And then I'm going to trim them again. And again, kind of hold them more at that 45 degree. grab them in the front and keep holding that pinch pretty tight and then you can work your way back I got a couple of loose ones there they were short and I'm gonna work my way back and then I'm gonna fill in the rest of that uh, nose with the black hair and the the tail or the wing kind of seems a little messy right now I have to turn it so I can see this side good now we take our whip finish and again put the hook over the thread around the camel hump bring it back invert it there's our X bring that down to the shank put several wraps on there I take my poke and snip and trim that Now it kind of looks, look at how thick and everything that looks. I'm going to pull everything together, all my deer hair together. And I'm going to squeeze it all together and I'm going to push it forward a little bit. And I'm going to kind of squeeze that. I'm going to kind of squeeze that down into place. 
And what that's going to do is just straighten that, lay that flat out the back there. Again, I'm going to push that floor just a little bit of it and kind of flatten that out. And then when you pull it back, that's going to lay flatter. I got one one hair there that's short. Take that off. I'm going to take my uh, head cement. I'm not going to clean the brush off completely or really well like I would with a dry fly. And then you could just run your brush, scrape your brush on it, and that will get plenty on there that's going to soak in. Maybe sometimes a little bit even off the stem. And of course, if you want, you can go ahead and put eyes on there. But this is this is a good fly, especially I use this a lot in the winter time. And just kind of let it sit there. Even in slower water, just kind of let it sit there and it, it's going to be going with the waves up and down and stuff. And they hit that pretty good. And here we have a bead butt black nose dace. Hope that you learned something from this video. Hope that you would subscribe to my channel. Please refer me to your friends. Please visit my sponsors. Let them know that I sent you. Leave comments, questions, suggestions. If you'd like to purchase any flies that I make, go to etsy.com slash shop slash the flyman gym. And if you don't see it, just send me a message on Etsy, and we'll figure out what you want. And most of all, I thank you very much for watching my videos.